Biblical Sexual Purity Teaching Godly Sexuality with Hosanna David Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Brother Hosanna David. This is a message the Lord gave me last week. It is about sexual immorality in the church. Sexual immorality is growing it is growing at an alarming rate. Unfortunately, many people who are in a position of authority to speak and condemn this evil and also correct those who are involved. And if possible, when the need arises, discipline those who discipline those who fall into temptation. Many of today's leaders are actually sleeping. I remember a revelation I had some days ago in which I find myself, I found myself in a church. It was a cathedral and there were lots of clocks on the wall of the church. Both sides, there were clocks, wall clocks, everywhere. But one thing I noticed was that each clock had its own time. All of them were not saying the same thing. That is a confusion that a lot of men of God and a lot of ministries have thrown end time Christians into. Let us pray. Holy Father, thank you for all your goodness, your mercy. We bless you. Thank you because those you love, you rebuke and chasten. Those in the world who are lost, they don't have the privilege to hear messages like this. But Lord, you loved us and you called us into your kingdom, the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ, having translated us from the world of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. Thank you, our God. We ask that you help me to deliver this message to us. As it concerns your children, so it concerns me, and it, so it concerns every child of God in this world. And if you tarry Jesus, those who will be born into this world. Lord, help your church. Use this message to touch souls. Use this message to convert souls. Use this message to correct your children. I pray that those who will hear this message, this word will become the driving force towards righteousness. May this word never be heard against you on the last day. Therefore, Holy Spirit, we ask that you give us listening ears. Give us understanding hearts. Convict as many that are guilty so that they can turn in your leaf and save you in holiness and righteousness. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please share this message. Share this message to as many people as possible so that this message can go far and wide. In case you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and also share this video. On the 12th of November, that was last week Sunday, I saw a woman of God in a vision. She gave a message she supposedly received from God. She was actually quoting the message she supposedly received from God. This is what she said about the loss of God. What I gave you is become invalidated. This is exactly what she said. What I gave you is become invalidated. I wrote it down the exact way I heard it. What this means is it's, it's actually talking about the loss of God. She was referring to the loss of God that now we are living under grace. Even though she didn't say that, that is actually what she was talking about. That now we are living under grace, the loss of God uh, becoming invalidated. So we don't need to actually obey them completely or we can obey some of them or may not obey any of them because we are living under grace. 
That was a contest, she said it. But she was actually quoting a supposed message she received from God. Then after I heard this, the Holy Spirit said to me, these are the lawless preachers who turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. I have given, I have not given authority to these lawless women to teach and spread immorality in my house. I am standing at the door of my church. I will remove some of them and they will no longer deceive my children. The message is long, but please, even as much as I try to make the message short to be as brief as possible without actually much commentary, I also beg you to listen to this message to the end. Then he continued to say, many men have heard my word with contempt. They start to resist holiness in my house. Tell them that those who are falling should remove themselves from the altar they stand and get themselves treated. It is in my house I see sick and wounded soldiers leading the battle. Tell them that those who are sick and wounded need treatment. The strength of a team depends largely. Let me explain because this place actually needs explanation. What the Lord is saying here is that those who are leaders in the church who fall, those who fall into adultery or fornication or any kind of sexual immorality, they should step aside and not continue to lead and get themselves treated. Sin actually brings injury both to the soul, the spirit and the body. So those who fall in course of their journey in this world, those who fall into grievous sexual sins, should step aside and get themselves treated. That the strength of a team depends on the leaders. It depends largely on the leaders. There are many you call mighty men of God, but they are sick and wounded. They need not be on my altar, rather they need healing and restoration. The smell of their wounds do not allow me to come into their congregations. Tell my children that many of their prayers go unanswered because of the dirty wounds of their pastors. The arsenal of sexual immorality has brought down many of my servants. This is so deep that many of my children fail to understand how wounded and sick many of their leaders are. They should know that many of those who are standing in my church as leaders are actually falling. They are not standing before me. I have tried to heal them. That means those who have fallen and are sick and wounded. I have tried to heal them, but they have refused my healing terms. When I say you cannot continue to lay the hands soiled with sexual immorality on the heads of my children except you get healed and washed clean, they refused. That means the Lord says when he says, okay, now that you are falling into sin, what you need to do is you get yourself treated. Many of these pastors refuse. They don't want to take a break. They don't want to actually take a break, call themselves to order and resume their uh, pastoral work or their prophetic work. But they just want to continue to do the work, especially some of these general of us here. As a matter of fact, it is sickening to the ears that Many of them are now saying that, oh, if you commit sexual sins, you owe nobody apology, you owe nobody anything, you owe nobody confession. I remember a gospel singer early this year, who either early this year or late last year, who committed adultery, married men, 
And then he came online to say, oh, I committed adultery. I have sinned. Please pray for me. So man of God came online and attacked him that you don't owe anybody confession. But that is not actually what the Bible says. I've talked about the negative ones. Now let me talk about the positive one. I saw on Facebook, there is this lady. She isn't actually a pastor, not a prophet, but she is just a regular Christian who preaches the word of God online. She doesn't have a ministry. So she fell into fornication and gave birth to a baby. She wrote a very comprehensive article asking people to pray for her and apologizing for betraying the trust of people on her. She said, is what I did I, is is what I've done wrong? Yes. Am I ashamed of myself? Yes. Will, should I encourage others to do so? No. She came online to say, well, I had to take myself offline for a while because I sinned against the Lord and I am coming back, uh, but not now. I, I have seen, I committed fornication. This is not what is expected of me. Yes, that is what a true believer should do so that you don't get people confused. It is not the lifestyle of a Christian to live in sin. I am not trying to downplay the existence of temptation. Temptations actually exist. We are not actually standing by our own power, by our own strength, but by the grace of God. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It is of God that show it mercy. If you are standing, it is because of the mercy of the Lord. But what I am saying is that it is wrong for a church leader, for a serious Christian to hide their sins and die in silence. Secret sins kill. They kill. They lead to the fire of hell. And as believers who have their hope in eternal life that is to come, we must live up to standard and not live as deceivers. Remember the Lord sees the things human beings do not see. He sees the deepest depth so far. Let's continue with the message. Those who refuse to be treated and cleansed are polluting and devouring many of those they are to lead and save. The stench of sexual immorality rises up to heaven like an evil wind. It cannot enter because no one clean thing is permitted to enter into our holy dwelling. These are five things I command, I command my children to do. So these are five things the Lord told me which I wrote down. Number one, all those who fall into sexual immorality must confess their sins and repent. Unconfessed sins have led many serious people into everlasting destruction. That means when people who are supposed to confess their sins and repent of them, when they fail to confess, it leads to everlasting destruction. Unconfessed sins. But a lot of people actually believe that if they confess their sins, the man of God is going to use them to preach and make a public show of them. No. There are some sins you can confess to God alone. There are some others you must go and confess to those you have wronged. That is restitution. There are other sins you must com confess publicly. Not just to your pastor alone. If God must forgive you, you have to say them publicly to the hearing of everybody. There are some you need to go before your man of the man of God or your pastor, or if you are a pastor, go before your fellow men of God. But it must be somebody that is trusted, that, is, that has been tested with the word of God and tried by the Spirit of God that this is a genuine man of God. If not, if you do it rashly without carefulness, you could even land yourself in a bigger problem. If you 
meet a false teacher, they could tell you it doesn't mean anything and turn your heart against God. Instead of you to be remorseful at the end, you become hardened against the word of God. So we must be careful. Number two, all those who defy their marriage bed or their bodies must step down temporarily. That means, men of God, these instructions, bulk of this message is to men of God and women of God. They should be healed first. They should be healed first before stepping upon my altars to proclaim my word. The proclamation of the eternal gospel must be done by insiders, those who are saved. Tell them that it is impossible for those who are not members of the kingdom of God to admit people into the kingdom. That is the truth. Before you can admit people into the kingdom, you have to be a member of that kingdom. There is a minimum requirement for every servant of God. There are standards. So you can't just wake up and say you want to represent God. There are things people expect from you. That is why you as a servant of God, there are things you must not do. Even though it may not be sinful in the sight of God, but so long as it is going to make somebody's faith to drop. So long as it's going to make somebody misunderstand the standard and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, you must not do it. It is not a sin to eat meat, to eat food. But if you eat food, probably things sacrificed to idols or maybe some things that could make somebody's faith to drop if they see you eating it. Please don't eat it. That is the truth because you can't use because of your faith to destroy the faith of a weak believer. How much more things that are sinful? There is a minimum standard that we must maintain. There are things that are not expected of us. So if you fall into adultery or fornication, you must step down. You have to step down. Unfortunately, a lot of people who have churches as businesses, they will go on and defend themselves. So make sure that nobody even holds anything against them. They can go ahead and kill every evidence. But let's remember that every work we're doing is for God. If you are in for business, that's your business. But there's a reward. As we continue to go, we will discover that the Lord has a reward for some certain set of people, different categories of people. God has his own different rewards for them. Number three, many of those who fell into sexual sins have covenanted themselves to different demons and kingdoms. Some of these have become possessed with demonic spirits. That means many of those who fall into sexual sins. I know a lot of people think that they are very prayerful, but there are laws guiding this world. No matter how Holy Ghost filled you are, if you sleep with a prostitute, you must become one flesh with that prostitute. You can't bind it. You can't cast it. It is a law ordained by God himself. For when two come together, they become one flesh. That is it. Sexual sin is a very serious sin in the sight of God and in the kingdom of God. It is taken as a very serious sin. He who sins commits just ordinary sin, sin against God. But he who commits sin, sexual sins, sin against himself, his body, and against God. It is very serious. These sets of people need to go before their fellow and be delivered. That means pastors who fall into sexual sins and become possessed or have covenants with demonic uh, with demons and demonic kingdoms and those who are initiated, they need to go 
to their fellow pastors, I mean true pastors, and be delivered. Many pastors are blindly initiating their members into the kingdoms of darkness because they themselves have either hidden their sins of adultery or fornication or they refuse to go for deliverance. My judgment shall come upon my judgment shall come upon these sets of pastors like fire because they did not only pollute themselves but others too. I have said, He that is joined to a harlot is one body with her. First Corinthians chapter six verse sixteen. But why do you go about my holy assignment? Of leading my holy people with that body of halotry. The thickness of sexual immorality is so much that my Holy Spirit cannot pass through many of your congregations. Any congregation I cannot enter does not belong to me and cannot enter my kingdom. Number four. All those wolves in cheap clothing that seduce my people and lead them through the broad way into the darkest parts, darkest parts of hell, hear what the Lord says. Even though your sins are great, you have chosen not to repent because you have chosen this path to seduce, pollute and initiate my innocent children into different dark kingdoms. I will make your punishment great. You shall gnash your teeth in the same place the ungodly and wicked kings and queens of this world shall be tormented day and night forever. Your torment shall be without the mercy of the Holy One. You defy many of my altars and led many into captivity. Your wickedness is too great, therefore I will greatly increase your eternal pains. The stench of your own sexual immorality shall ever devour your bowels, and you shall continue to vomit out, and you shall continue to vomit out your intestines forever and ever. It's like someone is vomiting, is engaged in serious vomiting and they are vomiting their intestine out and it continues like that. If you are guilty, please repent. Don't fall. Don't ever fall into the head of this angry God. God will judge this world with anger. Don't fall into the hands of this great God and King. He's been silent and he's not going to be silent forever because he has set the day aside that he is going to judge every wickedness. Let's continue. Your punishment shall be so great that only those who blaspheme me and twist my word for personal gains shall groan in pains deeper than you. That means he is saying that those pastors who live in sexual immorality and even initiate either blindly or intentionally initiate their members into the kingdoms of darkness and transfer demons to them. He said their pains will be so great that only those who blaspheme and twist the word of God are going to have greater pains than this set of people. I detest your very flesh because your rot is more than the dirtiest waste from a man's bowels. You are waging war against holiness and purity. This is true. If you sound pure and condemn sexual immorality, any form of it in the church today, a lot of times you will see men of God who will wage war against you. Sometimes those who are possessed will go to their kingdoms 
and prepare very strong and beautiful ladies to come and tempt you because they want you to join them or they want to do it to disgrace you. That is what is happening today. If you stand to condemn these things, they will come after you. Let's continue. This is one of the highest wars humans have ever engaged in against me, the Amica. This war is so fierce among the people of this generation that only a few that only a few survive it. The cans of worms of sexual immorality on many altars have devoured many genuine hearts that would have been faithful to the end. Be sure that the same sword of fire that brought down Lucifer from his height and the position of admiration shall soon bring you all to the bot bottomless pit of everlasting shame. The many souls you have sacrificed on the secret altars of sexual immorality shall rise up and speak against you on the day of the great judgment. There shall be none to save you from the anger of your maker, whom you have fought against while on earth. Now, this is a warning to young ministers. Many young ministers are emulating these black dogs whose sins have already condemned them before they even existed. Occult men who cannot live and be happy without feeding on the blood of the innocent. The fire of hell consumes you already even before you arrive, the darkness of the fire of hell. Your sins against my church, humanity and your maker are so great that you have chosen to burn forever instead of confessing them to the hearing of men and repent. Your shame shall therefore be great and it shall be forever. You are condemned not by the mercy of God, but by his judgment. But if you can humble yourself and repent, I will forgive you and restore you to princehood. Number five. Those who teach and seduce my children, breed and promote all forms of sexual sins among my children and in the world. Your judgment has already been passed only genuine repentance and fervent labor can save your souls. These are those who turn my written word into pieces but deliberately choose to pick up the pieces they like and set fire on the pieces they hate. Nobody who touches my word, either to add to it or remove from it, shall go unpunished, including those who blaspheme my holy name. Have you not read that the whole world is held together by the word of God? Have you not read that the word of God is eternal? Why do you wrestle to alter the eternal commands of God? Remember the first vision I had, a woman saying that the, the word of God, the loss of God, becoming invalidated or is invalidated. These seducers who call themselves pastors, teachers and prophets seduce my people and cause them to live in the abominable faith of their own sexual immoralities. The sexual sins of my people are like houses built on a huge mountain until it gets to the until it gets to its top the houses that means the houses at the top collapse and fall against the others and the rubbles pile up against other houses those at the foot of the mountain have no idea of the filth and stench of the souls that are trapped there 
Now, let me explain what I saw. I saw a very, as the Lord was speaking to me, I saw a very huge mountain. And this mountain, from the foot of it, down to the very top, there were buildings. There were buildings, different houses built on the mountain, all over around the mountain, up to its very top. There were houses. And I saw that some of these houses actually collapsed. Some of them collapsed. And, but they didn't get to the foot of the mountain because they collapsed and crumbled against other houses that were still standing. Not that all the houses at the top collapsed. Different parts of the mountain, of the huge mountain, there were houses that actually collapsed. But if you are at the foot of the mountain, you can see those uh, you you can see those houses that actually collapsed because the houses at the foot of the mountain are blocking your view. They are obfuscating your views, and not just that. Uh, the rubbles, the blocks, and the waste, the rubbles, they did not actually get to the foot of the mountain. So those at the foot of the mountain have no idea that some houses have collapsed. So this is what the Lord say, is saying, that those at the foot of the mountain have no idea of the filth and stench of the souls that are trapped there why is it that my blind children do not keep asking why a holy congregation turn out to have essential appearances and atmosphere why do you fail to continue to ask why the demons of lust and all types of immoral acts room roam freely and possess the very people who gather to worship the holy god whose eyes cannot behold any form of sin why is it that the wise ones among my people fail to hold their leaders accountable and point the and point the holy word of god to them so that my word can judge them and their evil acts so if you look at many churches today the there is no system that actually points out the word of god to the man of god or the prophet the general overseer in case he is preaching things that are not in line with the doctrine of the apostles or biblical doctrine there are many churches today anything the man of god says stands nobody can question him nobody can uh, there is no committee that can actually checkmate what he is doing. He is everything. He is the law. He is the constitution. And people worship them. This is wrong. Any church where you cannot question, you cannot respectfully question questionable things that the man of God is doing, that church is not the church of Christ. Because Jesus is the head of the church. No human being owns the church, but when someone sees the church as his business empire and decides to run it the way he wants to run it and not subject the leadership of the church to the authority of the Bible, don't attend that so-called church. That is not a church. It is a business center. Anybody that is so proud that you cannot question his doctrine with biblical passages that the Berean Christians used to open the word of God and study it at home to see if what they have heard is in line with what is written. Any man of God who is above the written word of God is not a man of God, he is a man of the devil. Stay away from him. Now let's continue. Have you not read that no priest is permitted to expose his nakedness before my holy altar? Exodus chapter 20, verse 26. Have you not read or been taught 
that ye that you are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. How is it that when you come into my holy presence, you shall fill with your censer of incense, sacrifices, and sweet aroma of praise? You come with your naked bodies. Some of you do not only come naked, but you intentionally seduce others with your sensual dances. If your leaders have not been dead enough in their immoralities to be done, they would have rebuked you and cast the unrepentant, dumb and deaf foods from among you, just as a baker of bread removes all yeast and cleanses the table and plates before he bakes the holy bread. If you look at many congregations today, I know there are some congregations that take dressing very seriously. You don't just go there with anything because they believe they are worshipping a holy God. They are not deceived. For instance, the Deeper Life Christian Bible Church. You don't just put on anything and go there. Look at many of our congregations today. You can put on anything. As a matter of fact, it was so embarrassing. In church, where I used to be a pastor, I was there for 10 years. It was so embarrassing, especially in uh, interdenominational uh, revival program or miracle program. It was so bad that some would come to church to seek the face of God. That means, if at all, they really have genuine, genuine intention of coming to seek the face of God, that they would not even put on bra. No brazier. And some of them don't even put on decent tops. And they go to church like that. This issue came up a lot of times. And we had to tell the security men and the protocol officers never to allow those people in. And from time to time, we would make announcements and tell them that this is the presence of God. But do you know that there are congregations where announcements like that are not made? They don't even take it seriously. And imagine a situation whereby the man of God preaches to the members that God doesn't look at your body, he only looks at your heart. And that you can put on anything to church. Let me tell you, I am the owner of Godly Dressing. Facebook page and YouTube channel, Godly Dressing. Every day I make posts on that page. It's, it's having 34,000 followers right now. It is my own little way of carrying out campaign against indecency, especially among Christians. The ministry website of that uh, line of my ministry is godlydressing.org godlydressing.org The high level of indecency among so-called Christians today those who believe that you can put on anything and appear before a holy God it is very very high it is very very disturbing Recently, I was watching a video of a former Christian who converted to Islam. The only reason she gave was that Christians, majority of Christians, she generalized it, but uh, those who go naked to church, they are not Christians. They are either newborn Christians or they are never Christians at all. 
Nobody who has been in church for years would dress half naked to church. That is not a Christian. As a matter of fact, many of those who go to church like that are agents of darkness. Some of them have been brainwashed. Some of them are stubborn goats who have refused to obey the truth. Some even confront the men of God for even correcting them. It's a lot of challenge. I remember this woman in church. People used to be afraid of her because of the way she dressed. A married woman, a politician's wife. So I prayed about it and God told me I should talk to her, but not to talk to her physically. So I called her on the phone. She was so mad at me when I called her and talked to her about her dressing. But do you know what? She changed. She changed. Everybody noticed it that she changed. Some of them, if you talk to them, they change. Some of them, if you talk to them, they keep you malice. Some of them, they will leave the church. But the church belongs to Jesus Christ. The fact that you leave doesn't mean that the church is going to close down. No. You are a royal priesthood. It is a sin for priests to appear before the altar of God half naked. Your nakedness may, must not be seen at all. Your nakedness must not be seen in any form. You have to dress well and cover yourself very well. A lot of people go to church to spread immorality, sexual immorality. And the, the level of sexual, sensual dances and dance steps some people engage themselves in in church. Uh, what am I even saying? Is it not some of the same people who go to nightclubs that even come to church on Sunday and or Saturday morning? The same people. Many Christians still go to, to, to the club. A lot of Christians don't see anything with going to the club. But if you are a genuine Christian, you will know that it is wrong to go to the club, to dance, to worldly music and praise Satan. And come on Sunday morning or Saturday morning, if you are a Sabbatarian, to lift up holy hands before God. God is a jealous God. He will never accept that kind of worship. Let's continue. The zinc and the roof are already broken, and you see no need to remove the unclean waters. Instead, you collect the dirty waters into bowls, with no intention of repairing the roof. This you do because you feed from the sins of my people, as they seek the want of your eloquent tongue. All the teachers who breed sexual immorality among my people shall be in great distress and anguish forever because the rewards of their deeds shall be poured out without measure. I hate the stench of your vomit because your inside is full of different colors of atrocities. And let me explain something. I saw a leaking roof. I saw a leaking roof and not just a leaking roof. The zinc was destroyed, was broken, it was leaking. And I saw a pastor collecting the dirty waters into bowls, containers. Instead of repairing the roof, he didn't even throw the waters away, he collected them. And I saw many of those containers in the room. If you have a leaking roof, what you're supposed to do is repair the roof so that it doesn't continue to rain the waters into your apartment. But what I saw was that this so-called man of God was collecting this water into buckets into bowls instead of repairing the leaking roof. And it wasn't just um, 
something that happened like an emergency it is something that happened and it was his tradition to collect these waters into uh, bowls instead of repairing the roof so in that vision i saw that he actually had the opportunity to repair the roof but deliberately choose not to repair the roof there is a group among you that i hate those who sacrifice others to get power fame and money you do not just commit adultery but you sacrifice many through sex rituals yet you put my holy name on your lips i the lord confirms it already that your condemnation is true when you hide your many children from people do you hide them from me too i know all those you sleep with and all those who get pregnant for you even the souls of those children you have killed cry up to me for vengeance what the lord is saying here is that there are people men of god who have secret concubines who live in adultery or fornication as the case may be but are hiding the children from such relationships this is what the lord calls secret children they are hiding them um it it is not in news that there are some even reverend fathers who have children reverend fathers and they are hiding these children from the public because they are out of wedlock children children from extramarital affair or from fornication there are different stories of even reverend fathers paying so much to keep his children secret and away from the public some end up committing abortion we've heard stories of uh, ladies who died because the men of god insisted that they must commit abortion that they don't want anybody to hear about it and God disgraced them, sit or sit down, took advantage and they died. We have to be careful. The days are evil. These people have their own reward from God. It is not a sweet reward. It is a huge, very heavy punishment that is coming from God. Please be careful so that you don't become a partaker of the sins of these people if you are involved in any kind of these sins please this is from it let's continue those who sleep with these deceivers who claim to work for me hear this i shall not deliver you because you lack my fear in your heart your soul is very sheep in the hands of these false prophets because the moment you agree to sleep with them i remove all my protection from you it is very painful when you see some ladies or some men who sleep with uh female pastors or uh female prophets some ladies take pride in sleeping with men of god i'm not talking about those who are on assignment for the devil but because of money you don't know what you're doing some of these people are actually occult men they are looking for blood they want to renew their covenants with the devil which you shall hear very soon in this message and you think you are enjoying yourself you are not enjoying yourself as a matter of fact we've seen people calling out some men of god some may be fake but not all of them that i did at this man of god um after a while i discovered that or this happening to my life i've tried to meet him and tell him to heal me or reverse it 
And some of them discovered that they were used for ritual, through sex ritual. And they cry out. Some of them are actually set up, but not all of them. Now listen, now I will tell you two of your offenses. That means the Lord talking to those who sleep with pastors or false prophets. You, number one, you have made yourself a source of power to these my enemies. By sleeping with you, they renew their powers to perform signs and wonders and to do evil on earth. Number two, you have chosen to bring down my church by sleeping with those who claim to work for me. So those of you who are experts in pulling down men of God or in dating men of God, which I know those who date uh, ladies uh, and sleep with them without getting married to them, they are not actually men of God. These are some sets of the people, this message, this warning about sexual immorality is actually going to. They need to repent. Those of you who specialize in doing this, you are condemned, except you repent. If you don't repent, the condemnation, judgment of the law is coming upon you. Now the Holy Spirit said to me, Proclaim this message and broadcast it wide, lest they say, I did not hear it. I shall build a wall of fire round about you, so that those who plan to harm you will not succeed. Again he said to me, one young ministers, that many of those they so much admire and want to be like, are already having their souls bound, ready to be cast into the lake of fire. If you can speak for me, I will make you great and I will continue to speak through you to my people. But if you fear or fall from my path to join them, that means to join these people, then will I multiply your punishment and punish you because you have known the truth. So this is what the Lord told me, that if I fail, now, this is what the Lord told me, that if I speak for him, he will make me great. And he will continue to speak through me. But if I fear or fall from his path and join these same people, this message is going to, then I will not be guilty. Like, this is it. A lot of people think that, oh, when the Lord gives you a message, you are exonerated. It is not like that. As a matter of fact, the message comes to you first before it goes out this the the sword of the lord is a double-edged sword so it cuts this way and it cuts the other way around you are not exonerated i remember uh, i think that was may this year was it may or april this year the lord gave me a message and he told me that this message you are preaching it to yourself and if you fail to do what I command you to do, this message will be a witness against you. And I preach the message. The message is titled, Enthrone God's Will Over Your Life. I have no other option than to obey. Even though you told me what I'm telling you, you are going to face a lot of challenges but i will be with you i have to obey i'm still facing the challenges today but i have no other option than to obey there is no peace except in obedience the peace could lead you into war uh, the obedience could lead you into war but even in the war the prince of peace will be in the battle with you, will be in the war with you, and he will definitely give you this peace that passes all, and it's all understanding. He said to me, one, all those ladies and a few men that Satan sends to seduce my faithful ministers, tell them 
that I have special places for them in hell. So those of you who specialize in sleeping with men of God, those of you who are agents of darkness, there are special places for you in the fire of hell. I remember in 2015, a girl of 15 years old was sent to me. She was confessing to me. I was in the office and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It was December, close to Christmas. The Holy Spirit sp spoke to me and gave me a name that I was actually sleeping. And then as I dozed off, he, he called a name. I didn't write it down. He said, he called the name and said, so, so person is coming. It wasn't the name of a human being. So I was very attentive. And then this small girl, the mom, brought to me. She actually brought three of them to me. One boy and two girls. One was eight years old, one was 15 years old. She brought them to me for prayers. I remember the Lord told me never to allow those children into my house. So anytime they come for prayers and knock at my door, I would tell them through the window to go to the office or go to the church. That girl, 15 years old, she has this stunted growth. She's not even a big today. She's an adult already. I spoke with her this year and I asked her. I put her on record. I recorded my conversation with her. I asked her if she could still remember the things that happened then. She said yes. At 15, she told me she was still a virgin and that they already put a baby in her womb. So I, immediately she came, I was, I started coughing. I was coughing, coughing, coughing. And then I was wondering, why am I coughing so hard? I wasn't coughing before. And then I paid attention. I listened to the voice of the spirit. I asked in my spirit, God, is anything happening? And then he said, this is the person I told you is coming. So I asked her, did you come alone? She said, yes. I said, no. I mean, spiritually, I was praying fervently in my, in my heart, in my mind. I was praying, asking God to take over the whole environment, spirit of the Lord to take charge of the environment. And I was praying that God should expose her and God really exposed her. So she confessed to me that she was sent. Bringing her to me, everything was an arrangement. But God did actually tell me that these two small girls that were brought to me was a plan that was made in the kingdom of darkness. He didn't tell me directly. He only said, I shouldn't allow them into my house. So I was working with the information I had. Do you know that she told me they already put a baby in her womb? So I asked her, look at how small you are. What gave you that boldness that you could sleep with me? You are small. She had no breast at 15. She hadn't started developing breast. I mean, she had this taunted growth. Even her younger ones are bigger than her. God exposed her. She told me, I asked her, why do you think that at this, your body size, you can sleep with me? She said, oh, they already gave her something to drink so that if she sleeps with me, she will not shout. That she will not shout. What I understand is that so that she will not feel pain. This work is very dangerous. This work is dangerous. Those of you who are agents of darkness and you take pride in attacking the men of God or try to bring them down, the Lord says you have your special places in hell. And if you don't change, you will go there. And it is going to be everlasting. You will be in the bottomless pit of hell. You will be in special cells in hell, special cages in hell, except you will bet. Let's continue. 
Tell them that I have special places for them in hell. Their punishment shall be unique among all fallen, fallen and condemned men. Tell them that they will never go unpunished. I have cursed them, but if they repent, I will have mercy on them and forgive them. Warn all my children and mankind that all those who must please me and enter my kingdom must live sexually pure lives. Remind them that no sexually immoral person will inherit the kingdom of heaven. I have spoken. This is a message that the Lord gave me. Let those who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Don't allow those who have been condemned to deceive you. A lot of them who call themselves pastors and prophets have been deceived. I remember in 2007 precisely, one self-acclaimed reverend, a general overseer, laughed at me that I had no girlfriend. He laughed at me that I was not man enough. When I told him I had never had a girlfriend, he was laughing at me. He was even making jest of me and making fun of me. 2007. Please run and escape for your salvation. Run for your life when you meet people like that. For those of you who are corporates, those of you who are involved in one kind of sexual immorality or the other, please go and confess your sins. Repent. And those of you who are already in the occult world and you have sex with people to renew your power, <laughs> the punishment shall be so great. You will burn in hell forever. God said it is only those who blaspheme his name and those who twist his word that we have greater pains than you, than those in your category in hell. It is time to return to the true God. It is time to return to God. Repent and be saved. The kingdom of God is at hand. Please share this message. Share this message wherever you can share this message. Share it and let it go far and wide. Stay away from sexual immorality. Those of you who are involved in pornography, those of you who sleep with prostitutes, you cannot claim to be a Christian and you are dining with the devil. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. God is coming for a holy church. He's coming for a church that is without spot and wrinkle. If you are caught up in one sexual scene or the other, please declare fasting for yourself. It is not normal for someone who says he's a Christian to be living in sin. I remember a few weeks ago, I asked a young man who told me that he's a very, okay, it's about two months ago. He told me he's a very serious Christian, that nothing is working for him. So I asked him, do you have a girlfriend? He said, yes. Do you sleep with her? He said, yes. And you told me you were born again? I told him, you are not born again. You can't claim to be a born again Christian and you are living in sexual sins. No, it is not possible. You can't have a girlfriend, you can't have a boyfriend and be sleeping with someone you're not married to and you say you were born again. You're not born again. You are a rebel. As a matter of fact, those who commit fornication or adultery are supposed to be excommunicated. They are supposed to be excommunicated. Strong Christians, believers, who are caught up in adultery, they are supposed to be disciplined by the church. In St. Andrew's Cathedral, in Worry, Anglican Communion, when I was the head of the media team, 
I told all of them, I'm not going to wait for the church authority to excommunicate you before I do it. So I told them, I'm not going to wait until you get pregnant or until you get, you get someone pregnant before I excommunicate you from this group. The baby is a blessing. Getting pregnant is not a sin. It is the way you, got, you get pregnant that determines whether it is a sin or not. If you get pregnant in marriage, when you are married, fine. Praise God. But if you get pregnant outside marriage, or if you're married and you got, get pregnant through another man, if I know it, I will excommunicate you. If I see you and I have evidence that you're committing fornication, I will excommunicate you. And I excommunicated two of the media group members. I told them, so long as I am the head of this group, this is what the Bible says. If you commit fornication, you commit adultery, if I know about it, if I investigate it, and it is true, I will excommunicate you. That is the standard of the Bible. If you are a new convert, the church can bear with your weakness and give you time to change. But today, the only question is that how many people are not living in sexual immorality? Only few. Only few. Some men of God even encourage it. They encourage people to have sex before they get married. As a matter of fact, I did a video a few years ago of one so-called man of God who said that fornication is not a sin. That Jesus Christ has died, he has nailed all our sins to the cross. So you can sleep with each other. It's, it's, not a, it's, it's no problem. Stay away from people like that. Don't allow anybody make you walk on the Broadway that leads to eternal destruction. Please share this video. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you and God bless you. Let us pray. Father Lord, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for helping me to deliver this message. Thank you for giving me the other part of this message. Even if, even though it took days, you gave me the other part of this message. And today, the message is out for your children to listen. Thank you. Those you love, you rebuke and chasten. If we are not rebuked and disciplined when we do wrong, it means we are bastards. You said in your word, you have heard by them of all times. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. You shall not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that you shall ever look at a woman so as to have a passion for her in his heart has already committed adultery. Lord God, you hate adultery, you hate fornication. And you said in your word that no sexually immoral person will by any means enter into the kingdom. Lord, help your people, help us. Help me that is preaching to your children so that I don't look back because I know the truth. I know the truth. Lord, those who are living in ignorance, help them. Those who know the truth, help them never to fall. Help the genuine servants. And those who are deceivers, Lord, touch them so that they can change. I know that no amount of evil they commit in this world is enough for them to receive eternal punishment in hell forever. Therefore, Lord, touch them. Touch their hearts. Lord, I pray for all my members that you will protect them. Deliver them from the evil ones. Deliver them from the hand of sin and the, the chains of addictions. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Help your church. Help the body of Christ worldwide. Oh Lord. Pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry. Father, please support them. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives and release your blessings until there is no more room to contain them. And most importantly, O oh Lord God, help them to make the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Heal as many that are sick. Heal as many that are sick in their bodies, in their souls, and in their spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. May the Lord God Almighty bless you as you share this message with people. Please, I want to beg of you that those of you who know the truth, don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Speak the truth. Confront when you need to confront with the word of God. Don't keep quiet. A lot of those who are supposed to speak the truth are no more speaking the truth again. Please speak the truth. Don't be afraid. The Lord Jesus Christ is able to protect you. And until we enter the kingdom and have eternal rest in our reward, there is no need to be silent in this world. Everyone is a watchman. Every saved Christian is a watchman. Please speak the truth. Don't be quiet. And when you see those who speak the truth, any way you can support them, support them. Pray for them. Pray for me. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.